how to make scatter plots, least squares line, find r squared, and deal with outliers and interesting points in the scatter plot. Um, in order to follow along with this, you should stop the video right now, go and get the class data file, and follow along with me as I am doing this. Um, it will hugely benefit you to actually do it with me. So what I'm going to show you first is how to make a scatter plot. What we're going to look at in the class data file is we're going to look at how people's screen time per week, that's column I, affects how much they study. You would guess that they're negatively related, right? That the more time you spend looking at screens, the less time you're studying. Okay, we want to use the screen time as the explanatory variable and study time as the response variable. It, that's not an obvious choice. It could go either way. Really important, everything you do um, having to do with two numerical variables requires you to decide which is the explanatory and which is the response variable. And in particular, the easiest way to communicate that to Excel is to put the explanatory first and the response variable second. So what I always do, even if they're right next to each other and in the right order, I just make sure I've decided by copying the explanatory variable somewhere, different sheet ideally, or whoops, what did I do there? Um, ideally a different sheet, or you can just do it in the same sheet, but somewhere out of the way. Copy them and take a moment to make sure that your explanatory variable and your response variable are in the right order, explanatory first. Okay, having done that, the first step is to make a scatter plot. You should highlight the two columns. Ideally, just highlight the two, the entire two columns, but you can also highlight all the data in a rectangle, whatever you prefer. And then, depending on your Excel, there are a couple of different places where you might find the scatter plot. In my Excel, I can either look in the Insert tab and over here you will see a whole bunch of charts, including one that looks like a scatter plot. Or I can go into the insert menu bar and say insert chart, and it calls what we're making an XY scatter plot. I'm going to do this one. Um, it gives you several choices, and you want the first one, which just has the dots in it. Okay. There is our scatter plot. I'm going to make it bigger. And you can see what looks like a slight negative association. As you go from left to right, the data points in general go down, which is what we are expecting. That's the basic piece of information. But of course, what we would like, two things we'd like to compute are the R squared, which tells you the percentage of variation in study time explained by screen time, and the least squares line, which tells you how the variables are related. Again, where you find this may depend on your version of Excel, but mostly it will be in something called quick layouts, not what you would guess. If you click on the arrow in quick layouts, you will see, in my case, 11 different layouts that you might want to use. And the ninth one, in my experience, it's always the ninth one, but the best way to identify it is you see a line on there, which is the least squares line, and an F sub X, which indicates it's going to tell you formulas. Okay, when you click on that, it draws the least squares line and um, gives you the equation. The first thing I always do, because this legend that it adds takes up so much space, is I click on it and delete it. And the second thing I do is this formula is always written right in the middle of everything else and is really hard to read, so I move it up where I can read it. The formula has two things. They're written kind of small here. One is it tells you that R squared is 0 0.002. So that tells you that the percentage of variation in study time explained by screen time is extremely small, 0.2%. And then the second thing it tells you is that the equation of this least squares line that it drew here is minus 0.0183x plus 8.6871. Um, what that should tell you is that for each additional hour of screen time you spend, you would expect on average to reduce your study time by about 0.02 hours, about a minute. Um, so there's not much of a relationship. The 8.69 
suggest to you that people who spend no time on a screen um, study between eight and nine hours. Okay. That's the basic thing that you want to learn how to do. I'm going to do a second example, but everything that you need to know is included there. I'm going to show you one more subtle thing in the second example um, that is not a big deal, but is helpful. Okay, so now I want to look at the relationship between high school GPA and college GPA. Here, even if I didn't tell you, it should be obvious that high school GPA is the explanatory and college GPA is the response, because in various ways, there's no way that your college GPA could affect the high school GPA. Okay, so again, we highlight these two columns. This time I'm going to use the insert menu and I'm going to insert a chart an XY scatter plot, and it doesn't give me choices. It just gives you the, the most useful one. So here's the interesting thing. Excel always starts its charts at X equals zero. And in this case, that means all the data is in the upper right hand corner because nobody had a high school GPA less than three and nobody had a college GPA less than about 2.4. Okay, that makes it really hard to see the relationship. Um, and makes a lot of wasted space. There's an easy way to fix that. If you click on the x-axis, anywhere along this x-axis, I guess double click, um, it will allow you to format the axis, including decide where the minimum is. So it set the minimum at zero and the max at five. We don't need all that space. We can start our minimum at three and we can be even more precise if we um, say, let's go up to 4.5. And now you see that the XY data is totally spread out. You can do the same thing clicking on the, I'm sorry, the X values are totally spread out, fill up all the space. You can click on the Y axis and do the same thing. Here, the smallest value looks like it's about 2.4. And the biggest value is pretty close to 4.5. So we'll leave it there. Okay, that much is much nicer. It fills up the space. Once again, let's make the chart bigger. Um, once again, to draw the least squares line, you have to find quick layout. It might be up in a menu. Probably it's right here. Um, and then the option with a line and an f of x will draw the least squares line and write the equation for it. Going to get rid of that. Um, legend that is of no use and move this out of the way. Here we see that R squared is 7.9%. Um, 7.9%, the variation at college GPA is explained by high school GPA. Not a lot, but way better than the last one. The coefficient of X, 0. 0.4691 is positive, suggesting there's a positive relationship as you would expect between high school and college GPA. And each additional one point in GPA High school GPA corresponds to about a little under a half a point in college GPA. The last thing it tells you is that someone with a high school GPA of zero would expect to have a college GPA of 1.63. That's a useless piece of information. That extends this line all the way to zero, which doesn't make sense. We don't have any data for people with high school GPAs less than three. Such a person would never make it, you know, a person, if you could have a zero high school GPA, you would never make it into Fairfield. So in this case, that y-intercept doesn't tell you anything useful. Okay, that is all I wanted to show you. No, I want to show you one more thing. I'm sorry. Um, tonight, you're going to watch a lecture about outliers. This, for example, is an outlier. This point is way below the line. It is called a regression outlier if it is far from the least squares line. So this point is a regression outlier. It's also an outlier in the y direction. It's lower than any of the other y values, not by a lot, whereas it's far below the line. You often want to look at these points individually. And if you hover over it, you find that it is an x value of 3.9 and a y value of 2.4. Um, and if you scroll along here, it's not so easy with a big data set, but um, you will find here's that data point. Sometimes, you want to eliminate an outlier if you think it is non-representative. You also may want to eliminate it just to see how big of an effect it has. Um, remember, an influential outlier 
as you'll see tonight, is one um, that is a, a regression outlier and that is far from the middle of the x values. This is pretty close, so it will not be a hugely influential one. Let's watch what happens when we get rid of it. Okay, if we delete that point. Not much changes. R squared gets slightly bigger. The slope changes a little bit. The y-intercept um, went up a little bit, but it was not a dramatic change. That suggests it is not an influential outlier. You will see in the next worksheet we do, or the one after that, I guess, you will see um, how big of an effect a, um, an influential outlier can have. Okay, that's all. I will see you all in class tomorrow.